My name is Ian Stocks. I'm a taxonomic entomologist with the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, Division of Plant Industry in Gainesville, Florida. Uh, the groups that I'm responsible for are the scales, mealybugs and their relatives, and the allorotidae, which are the white flies. So let's get, uh, let's go Seroplastes uh, floridensis, because now we've moved on to a part of the key where the anal plates are going to be more, when they're paired together, more quadrate in their profile or their outline. So go ahead and get it on uh, about sli uh, on, on the 4X lens. Uh, again, kind of with the head and antennae, and uh, well, the mouth parts, antennae, and legs in, in, in view here. And this is going to correspond to, um, this is going to correspond to plate number one. But also keep plate number two next to it, because I actually included two different species of this genus, uh, because there are a number of characters that are quite variable. This is a very important genus worldwide. Some of the species are very, very pestiferous. A number of them moved around quite easily over the decades. Um, and there are a number of these species that are still a problem here in Florida occasionally. Um, the taxonomy has been updated significantly over the past few years. Um, uh, a, a researcher in Brazil has published some, some fairly large monographs on seroplasties with a lot of, a lot of new species included. Um, and they can, it's, it can actually be a bit of a, it, it is actually a challenging genus because the, um, how observable a character is and therefore whether you can use it or not makes a, is, is very dependent on how well the specimen is mounted. Um, that's even if you've got a specimen that's in, in optimal condition for mounting. One of the problems with seroplasties and a number of scales is that as the females mature, um, they become increasingly sclerotized. Not only does that make them more difficult to put on the slide without crushing and deforming, it also obscures a lot of the characters that were more clear when they were less sclerotized. So, not the, if you have a, if you have a lot of specimens of, of what you think is a given species in a sample, that can be one of the good things is to take a variety of sizes um, because that, that actually happens with other groups too, that the older the female gets, the less, um, the less diagnosable she becomes because of the characters becoming obliterated. Okay, so we're going to start with the head here. Um, again, it's got fully developed antennae, okay, uh, fully developed legs, okay, but I want you to focus in on the leg here. Um, go up to 10x there, and then once you still got it in view, go to 20x, and we, we start right here. Um, it's not important for splitting this out as a couplet, but since we have the contrast state in the specimen, we'll go ahead and talk about it. But they had the tibia tarsal sclerosis in the milvasculus, and it was able to bend. Had that, that sclerotized knob there, and the, and the, the leg was able to bend. Um, if you look here, here's the tibia, here's the uh, tarsus right here. There's no sclerotized enhancement there, and as a matter of fact, there's only really just a faint suture line. These two segments have effectively become fused, and they're immobile on one another. Okay, so this is lacking uh, tarsotibial sclerosis. By and large, this is, a cons this is a character consistent at the species level, but occasionally you'll find um, a character, it's, uh, some specimens, where it's a little hard to tell. Um, uh, it really doesn't look like there's a sclerosis there, but it's really not quite clearly fused either. So, But generally speaking, it's a fairly straightforward character. All right, well, um, now we've, we've got that. Uh, what we'll do is we'll slide over to the side just a little bit to pick up the spiracle here. Okay. And then we can follow the spiracular furrow by looking at these, um, these pores on the lining there until we come to the edge right here. And this is the first uh, character in the second couplet that we're going to pay attention to. All right, here's the spiracle. I'll focus in again. Here's the spiracle to get our bearings. The spiracular furrow right here. And the margin right here. So we've got our marginal CD and our spiracular CD. First thing you'll notice is there's 
uh, more than three. Okay, there's actually a good number of them right here. All right, and you can also see they're fairly stout. They're much more um, robust, uh, have, you know, uh, larger shape to them. Just that the fairly simple uh, hair-like or fringe seed that we've seen before. CD, marginal CD and spiracular CD like this are characteristic of the genus Seroplastes, the wax scales. Okay, um, and for this species. Um, the ones in the spiracular furrow are just a, really just a little bit larger um, than the ones on the margin, but they continue along the margin for a good little while, and then they peter out and just become um, simple marginal flagellate CD like this. Okay, so now that you've seen them in, in fairly detailed view, I'm gonna pan out a little bit, give you more of a uh, a wider view. Here's the marginal, cl the, uh, the spiracular cluster right here, the uh, marginal conical CD up there. Those are the ones coming posteriorly, and these are the ones in the more anterior direction. Of course, they peter out there along the rest of the margin um, until you go down to, in this case, the posterior spiracle here. You pick them back up again. Okay? There's the um, conical CD there, the spiracular cluster there, more there. Okay. So this is this is essentially how you determine it was a Seroplastes or or one of the genera close to them. Um, another character that you'd look for um, when considering whether it's Seroplastes is right here. Of course, we're down at the anal region here. This is a very heavily sclerotized area. They're very difficult to make out, but in there would be the anal plates. Okay, the seroplastes typically have a fairly irregularly margined, uh, expanded area um, off to the sides and a little anterior of, of, of fairly significant sclerotization, um, uh, forming the anal process. Um, when you look at these, uh, when you look at seroplastes in, in real life, you know they're covered in this um, a fairly dense pillow of, of wax. Um, but this structure is usually protruding at the posterior end, and of course it needs to in order to help them move honeydew out of the way. Uh, so it can form a bit of a process or, or tubular cone, uh, uh, cone type structure depending on species. Okay. And this is also uh, a character that's, that's prone to damage in processing, especially as the specimens uh, become more uh, mature with age. Um, and now I want you to go out towards the margin again, close to where you see the um, conical marginal CD. Okay, because I want to draw your attention to the character in plate one, figure three. Now you're going to have to go up quite a bit of magnification, so go up uh, incrementally and just keep that region um, in the field there. Okay. All right. And I'm at 200x here. Um, let me see if I can find a better region. Try to pick up on these structures here. These are the tubular ducts. They're quite um, distinctive in this species. Um, if you remember the general shape of a tubular duct that we had in Milvoscutulus, um, let me see if I can find one where there. Got all the parts that I need. Again, I'm trying to have sort of panning around here, trying to find the um, be one of the better examples. Ah, oh, here we go. Um, let's see which one it is. It's going to be about right here. Look, look for the an opening on the cuticle. There'll be a, a tube, and then uh, 
Basically, it's just an inflated, rounded tip with a bit of a notch in it. Okay. There's one off to the side that's got a little bit more of the evidence of the gland right at the very tip of it. But you would compare that to, again, like I said, the, the picture, um, the, uh, uh, the figure uh, three in the first plate. And you see that there's a, a really good match there. So. so at this point, then, you would have diagnosed Seroplastes floridensis, the Florida wax scale. Okay? All righty.